whether we know it or not, we are part of the club. All of us have a choice. When you are listening to Holocaust survivors, it is their personal story. It is not the story of the Holocaust. It's happened to them. My purpose in life is to teach how it evolved step by step by step until it came to a point of no return. People ignored when people said certain things. People ignored when Hitler said something. The signs were there. The signs of today are here. People don't want to see it. The memory of the Holocaust is extremely sensitive for so many of us who feel close to the pain that was experienced. We become overwhelmed with emotions when we recall the horrors of those who came before us. But that's exactly why we have to unpack our traumas through genuine and open conversations. We are all part of one family, and our family needs therapy. There is a generational rift that plays out throughout the chapters of Jewish history, and we are witnessing its reemergence today. There have been an are Jews who believe that the fate of the Jewish people should be protected by and in the hands of the Egyptians, the Greeks, Persians, Romans, Europeans, and the other host nations we've survived through. And then there are Jews who have and believe that the future is in their hands and that anti-Semitism is not a problem for the world to solve, but a Jewish problem to overcome. And that Jewish empowerment is not a right for the world to give, but a Jewish mission to earn. Whatever camp you fall under, the worst thing we can do at this moment is to repeat the mistakes of the past and have our ideological tribes fall prey to the differences turning us against each other. There are times where we're being tested to unite, and if we do not, we know what comes next. These are those times. Anti-Semitism is on the rise, and the Jewish people are mostly divided and disempowered. Most Jews are not taught how to defend themselves ideologically, intellectually, or physically and most are not raised with the mindset of writing our own narrative instead of just surviving off of the beat of another nation's drums. If we can be so divided today, so apathetic today, do we really think it was different throughout the other chapters of Jewish history? The Hebrew perspective on our past is one of deep internal reflection. Every year our holidays are not only moments of celebration, but are opportunities of tapping into the generational traumas that our collective souls bear. From slavery in Egypt to the destruction of Jerusalem, moments in which we fail to unite, we look back and remind ourselves not to forget and not to repeat. 2,000 years of diaspora, 2,000 years of exterminations, persecutions, massacres, pogroms, inquisitions, expulsions, murders, and the atrocities that run shivers down our backs as we remember how few we really are that made it this far. Oh, we have trauma and we have reasons as to why we are so divided and living only to be accepted by our host nations. The Holocaust, the Shoah, was arguably the worst and most atrocious chapter out of the countless others. But while we process the previous chapters and contextualize them, we've memorialized the Shoah, we've honored the memories of the victims, but we have yet to as a nation truly do our Hebrew duty of looking from within and understanding what happened before it began, before our grandparents and their families were taken. I know it's hard, and I know it's painful, but we owe it to our ancestors, to our descendants, and the very few that remain from that generation to look within and to face it. Like all other chapters of Jewish history, including the one we are living today, the Jews pre-Shoah were divided. They were assimilating, they were passive and apathetic. As Nazism rose, it was a minority of Jews that woke up, and it was the majority that could not even see, due to the 2,000 years of trauma that understandably blurred our vision. The most important lesson we must learn is not only what happened, but how and why. Throughout Jewish history, when Jews are united, on their path together and empowered to fulfill their purpose, the largest of nations fall to their knees. When Jews are not, well, those nations decide how our story is written. Contextualizing the mindset of our establishment and most of the general population before the Nazis took power, and understanding how we could have united and prevented the Nazis from taking power, is not victim blaming. It's comprehending with the utmost empathy that we have been psychologically, physically, spiritually, and morally victimized. It's working to shed our victimhood in order to heal and to grow and to no longer be victims today. Does anyone really think we are doing enough today? Most Jews are fighting for every other cause except their own, subconsciously expecting for an exchange for the world to do ours. Do you honestly think the generations before were any more united or empowered? 
If chas v'shalom, something happened in this generation that I can't possibly fathom, but neither did the previous ones, I don't want any of our future descendants using the few activated Jews as examples of enough Jewish resistance, of enough Jewish empowerment, of enough Jewish unity. May it be on the record for generations to come. With where we are right now in Jewish history, do not dare think we are doing enough. And remember that whatever is to come will have been dependent on our will too and the time we take to wake up. This is empowerment. It is hard to achieve, but we must only have the highest of expectations for our own. We must set our standards as Maccabees, the few that can overcome the strongest adversaries, only as long as we are united and strong. The following is a conversation I had with Shoah survivor Sammy Stegman, one of the few voices left from that generation. He was experimented on by the Nazis as a child and Baruch Hashem is still here to teach our generation urgent lessons that we can no longer ignore. Hi everybody, my name is Sam Steigman. I'm a Holocaust survivor, child of Holocaust survivor, motivational speaker, being deported by the Romanians in 1941 at the age of only a year and a half, I was subjected to medical experiments. The side effects I still feel them every day, will feel them for the rest of my life. And at the same time, I teach the young people not to stereotype because my life was saved by a German woman. Thank you, Sammy, for uh, taking the time to speak with us today. I know we've known each other for many years. Although many Holocaust survivors talk about their personal experiences, what they went through, the horrors they overcame, uh, the beauty of their story of how they were able to survive, that we have so much to learn from. I don't hear often many Holocaust survivors speaking about what happened before. And I don't hear many Holocaust survivors speaking about why it happened. And I think that the what happened before and why it happened is just as important as learning about the stories of those who went through the Holocaust. And if we remove that context from those stories, it's almost as if we lose the point. It's not just about remembering what happened to them. It's about remembering what happened before that led to that happening and why it happened and what we could have done and what we can do today to learn from those lessons. And that's a very important point that I think is missing with a lot of Holocaust education. And I think it's something that you've always embodied that I've learned a lot from you on um, and that I wanted uh, for you to be able to speak and to share your story and your insights and your light with other people. And my story, which as compelling as it may be, as compelling as every Holocaust survivor story is, it is not about the Holocaust. So my focus is in learning the lessons that we can learn from uh, the Holocaust, how it evolved. There were many, many things that people did not pay attention, uh, did not want to see what can happen, what will happen. Uh, Hitler and the Nazis, Hitler had, uh, when they started the Nazi party, very few people know that it consisted of only six people and nobody paid attention to that. Okay, they are nothing. They cannot do anything. And slowly, little by little, by through propaganda, and uh, I would say not only were the Nazis very good at propaganda, they were actually geniuses in it. And uh, Joseph Gable said something that we must remember today. A lie told long enough becomes true. We have to learn from the best. So the first question I have is, do you think that this generation today has a responsibility to deal with the growing amounts of anti-Semitism and has the responsibility to dictate what kind of future we would like to live. Absolutely, no question in my mind. Unfortunately, my generation, people may disagree with me, has a victim mentality. Uh, that victim mentality has also been passed to the next generation, your generation. Uh, it may not be as strong as in my generation. Nevertheless, it's still there because uh, I can tell you from my going to various campuses, I found out there is too much apathy. Yes, you do have a responsibility to make a difference in this world, uh, to be united, and you have to march nationwide. So the majority of my family on my father's side was exterminated in the Shoah. And I grew up with those stories. I grew up with my grandparents as survivors. And when I went on the trip of March of the Living, when I was 17 years old in 2011, going to Poland and seeing the different concentration camps, the organizers gave us a packet of letters written by different Jewish leaders at the time, heads of communities, heads of organizations, head of federations, rabbis, and so on. And these letters were written to each other about what to do with the rise of anti-Semitism. I'm talking to you before the gas chambers, before the ghettos. And what these leaders were writing to each other is basically saying that if we did something, it would only get worse. And what we needed to do is to make sure that we stand down and only by standing down would this just blow away because there's no way that any society in Europe of being so enlightened would ever do such a thing against us. And even if Hitler is such a horrible person, there's no way that the people would follow. Now, when I learned this and realized that 
it was very clear what the Nazis wanted to do, but the Jews were refusing to believe what they wanted to do, which is why we say after the Shoah that when someone tells you that they want to kill you, believe them. And we also say after the Shoah, never again, which doesn't mean that just because you say it, it doesn't happen, but means we take the generational commitment to make sure it doesn't happen again. And if it does happen again in our generation, which I don't think it will, but if it does, it means that we, our generation, leaders and the general population failed, which is why it's so important to talk about this now. And so important to look back at history as well and understand that the leaders then also failed. Now, it doesn't mean that there wasn't also a victim mentality that was caused for 2000 years of extermination and persecution and pogroms that happened way before the Holocaust that led us into a victim mentality. Our desire to just want to be accepted and liked and loved and not mistreated that led us to wanting to assimilate. We understand why we got into the victim mentality in the first place before the Shoah. But we need to understand that that victim mentality, if we did not have it, if we grew out from it, if we healed from it then, and if we heal from it today, we can and we could have prevented those things from happening because we could have stood up. We could have shifted pop culture. We could have recognized the signs and we could have left in the right moment. So I want to know what do you think about that? We have to understand why we didn't do it. And that's the lesson is that we must do something about it when we see the signs of today. They did not react at the beginning. And this, this is also the same problem with uh, the state of Israel. Okay, uh, as an example, I'm going to give a BDS. They were very, very small, okay? We did not react to them, said it makes no difference. Now it came to a point uh, of uh, almost of no return, okay? It's a real battle. Uh, in Germany, it happened the same way, but uh, the Jews uh, fought for Germany. Uh, they uh, felt in their German first. Uh, they were uh, assimilated. They did not want to leave willingly. They lived there for centuries. Uh, however, Jewish leaders, okay? told them, don't leave. This is the most enlightened country in the world. It cannot get worse. So when the war started in September 1st, 1939, because of the Jewish leaders, about 200,000 Jews still remained in Germany. And we know that uh, being Germans, considering themselves Germans, the Germans still considered them Jews. And although they fought for Germany in World War I, it did not help them in the end. So you would say that most Jewish leaders, as they saw the rise of anti-Semitism, they might have recognized the very clear instances of Jews getting beat up and Kristallnacht and other things that obviously is recognized, but that their response to it was more, we're German, we're Austrian, we're Hungarian, we're French, um, Jewish is just our religion, and we will always be protected by these enlightened societies, and instead of doing something about it, we should put our heads down because the government will take care of it and the society will take care of it. Is that correct? Exactly. That is what I call the victim and death. Do you think okay, that not, not, not to stand up for who we are, to be proud of who we are, and to fight for our identity? Do you think that we can uh, look back and learn from those lessons and realize that the Jews needed to fight back at that time and that they didn't fight back and most leaders were telling Jews not to fight back and to put their heads down? Do you think that we should look at that and learn from that today? Absolutely. And uh, I am saying the same mentality. I say, uh, it's in a joking way, but it's also a lot of truth in it. The enemy is us. We have to understand why we didn't do it. And that's the lesson, is that we must do something about it when we see the signs of today. Unfortunately, my generation still has a victim mentality. Your generation is halfway on the right path. Your children will make a difference in this world. If you really look at what's happening today, you will see that the Jewish leaders are not reacting appropriately. The same way the Jewish leaders then didn't act appropriately. Correct. So what I'm trying to say is that we have not learned the lessons. We are acting passively, not actively. And we have to be in your face without violence, but we have to be in your face and say, we have to stop this. We cannot go any further. The way that Jewish people look at Jewish history is that we look at the mistakes that we've done and we learn from their lessons. We look at the sale of Yosef uh, by his brothers into slavery. We look at the slave mindset that we had while we were slaves in Egypt. We look at the golden calf that was built because we were afraid that Moses wasn't going to come back. We look at the 10 spies that come back and talk negatively about Israel because they're afraid. We look at uh, Shaul leaving an Amalekite king alive. We look at the Sinat Chinam, the, the hatred between Jews that we had leading to the destruction of the temples. So 
we look at Jewish history, we have Purim coming up soon even, and we understand the things that we got wrong before, the things that we got right, and we learn from it in order to not repeat it again. Why do you think that when it comes to the Holocaust, many Jews are not viewing it through the same lens, and they're viewing it as some sort of memorial that we can just hear about, but we can't really learn from. We can't really understand the lessons from. We can't even view it understanding the mistakes that we made prior to the Shoah. Now, I'm not talking about the Jews that were uh, victims in the concentration camps, too skinny to be even able to move. I'm talking about before the Nazis took power and as they were taking power, and understandably, they were in a victim mindset, so they were trapped in their own mindsets. Why can't we view the Holocaust through that same lens of Jewish history like the rest of Jewish history? When you are listening to Holocaust survivors, it is their personal story. It is not the story of the Holocaust. It's happened to them. My purpose in life is to teach how it evolved step by step by step until it came to a point of no return. And it started with words. Okay, people ignored when people said certain things. People ignored when Hitler said something. People ignored when there's some leaders in our country say the wrong things and everything else. They say, ah, oh, it's a person, you know, it's just one, it's nothing. We have to stand up to every one of them. And do you think that if we didn't have this mindset that it would be possible for us to uh, have changed history and for things to develop differently? Absolutely. And the Holocaust and genocide could never happen without the participation of the local people. Okay, and the only way that the local people will not participate in the murder and everything else, okay, if they are taught not to hate, it was in front of them. They saw it. The world knew about it. The United States knew about it. Everybody knew about it. Nobody wanted to believe that it's possible that human beings can do such atrocities. Most people don't know that the Nazis' ideas was not something that was hidden. Hitler wrote Mein Kampf before he went into power. Uh, he wrote it while he was in prison, and he wrote that his plan was to exterminate the Jews. But they ignored it. They ignored, it. they ignored BDS and everything. Exactly. They were very okay, upfront and that. honest about their goals the whole time. And you had very few Jews who were standing up and whistleblowers. They were saying, hey, let's wake up. Let's realize that we're Jews. We're not German. We're not Austrian. We need to leave now or we need to fight back. And if we don't fight back, we need to leave now. And those Jews were shamed. Those Jews were blamed. They were like, it's because of you that the Nazis are growing power. It's because of you that people are rejecting us. Why can't you just be a good German? Why there's, can't the inter you there's an inter fight among ourselves, so like I said right. before. And so, um, it's not I'm a joke. It's, uh, okay, uh, our, uh, our enemy, the enemy is us. We are fighting among ourselves. We are not united. We have to speak with one voice. I'm trying to make the point that the people at the time that were seeing what was happening and telling other Jews to wake up and realize what was going on, that they were being shamed and they were even being blamed for the reason for why the Holocaust was rising because they were saying, if you were just assimilate, then there wouldn't be this movement against us. And if you just stood down, then it would just go away. Yes, most of the people, most of the leaders felt that way. The Jewish leader told the Jews, to remain in Germany because they felt it, it was the most enlightened country in the world and it cannot get worse. So the Jewish leaders were actually actively promoting the wrong ideas. Did these few Jews also warn Jews as they were getting onto the trains, telling them, guys, what the Nazis are telling you with these orchestras and these flowers and these ideas that you're going to have a clean shower and be relocated to something better is all a lie. And you're actually being taken to your death. Wake up. Don't get on that train. Did Jews warn the other Jews before then? And did most Jews just say, no, it's not true. It cannot be. They're telling the truth. OK, OK. I want you to understand the mindsets of that period of time. People did not want to believe that that is possible. The signs were there. The signs of today are here. People don't want to see it. And nothing is going to change unless we are united, unless we march nationwide, unless we bring the media with us. Legislation is not going to make any changes in how people perceive the Jews. Legislation will not eradicate hatred. Take it as an example of Martin Luther King Jr. Take a look what he accomplished, and he did it without violence. And so would you say that most Jews were manipulated in the Shoah and walked into the trains leading to the concentration camps and later into the gas chambers, and that they walked in really believing what the Nazis were telling them, that they were not going to be killed, however, that you did have Jews warning about it and that they were being pushed away and ignored? They couldn't believe it. They didn't want to believe it. It's Why? incomprehensible. Because it's of incomprehensible. A, because of a victim mentality. Correct. 
And so can we talk about that victim mentality that we had before without saying that we're blaming the victim? I'm not talking about blaming the victim. I'm talking about taking responsibility. And I think many people are afraid of today and then taking responsibility. And whenever we talk about taking responsibility, people are accusing that as victim blaming. How did I free myself, become a free man, and not, be, uh, not remain a prisoner of my own mind? By taking that responsibility, all of a sudden, I don't have the need to blame circumstances. I don't have the need to blame anybody. Okay? It's the best. I am able to move forward. Does that analogy and apply to the Holocaust as well? Yes. And that's what I wanted to try to say. Okay? People have not taken personal responsibility. Unfortunately, and I'm going to say it again, and if you can correct me, I would be grateful. I believe I'm the only one that is teaching the young people about the history, the evolution of the Holocaust and genocide. Not just the what happened, but the why it happened. Exactly. You know, you had Jews in positions of power. You had Jews that were lawyers, that were doctors, that were businessmen, that were in music, and they could have used their positions to speak out. If you look at the people of color in America, they didn't even have positions of power, and they were able to get society to recognize that racism was wrong and get Black people to have equal rights. Now, granted, there's still much more to do, but A, you don't need power to make change. You need unity. And B, we also had people in positions of power we could have leveraged. And most Jewish leaders said, no, let's do nothing. Let's just communicate with those on the top. And on top of that, the people that were in positions of power were too worried about keeping their assimilated identity and being seen as German or Austrian and French, rather than protecting and preserving their Jewish identity and making sure it could survive. The Jewish people have this notion that the way we have security is by the rest of the world. It was the rest of the world's responsibility to act then, and it's the rest of the world's responsibility to act now. So if we talk about what happened to us, the rest of the world will feel for us and do something about it. And what I would like to make the argument of is it's not the rest of the world's responsibility, it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to write our future. It's our responsibility to deal with our mistakes. It's our responsibility to strengthen our weaknesses. It's our responsibility to unite. It's our responsibility to educate and to condition a society to understand what is right and wrong when it comes to the Jewish people. It is our responsibility. And if we do not learn this lesson from the Shoah, it is bound to repeat. And I don't see it repeating, but we need to learn in this generation that we right. need to take responsibility. And that is the main lesson to learn about why it happened. What I want to do is I want to learn because the people did not do what they had to do in those days. They were not united. Verbally, they said, I'm proud Jew, blah, 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 whatever it is, but not in with their actions. Uh, what I would concentrate is I would concentrate on the leaders of today to make sure that we become united Unfortunately, like I said before, my generation has a victim mentality. Nothing will change. Do you think your generation had a victim mentality because of the Shoah or before the Shoah? Before the Shoah. They always had that mentality, leave us alone, and we want to live in peace and we will not make waves. You shared with me stories um, over the years of you not only surviving the Holocaust, but surviving child experimentation that the Nazis did on you, causing you a lot of harm onto your body. And I want to share with you also a story. Um, like I said, my father's side of the family was mostly exterminated in the Shoah, and my parents decided to give me the name Rudy after a survivor of the Shoah himself. And this individual, Rudy, was born in Germany to a very assimilated family. The grandparents had served in World War I, and the family all felt very German. And he recognized already from a young age as he went to school that he would always be picked on and hated for being a Jew. And rather than saying, no, I'm not really Jewish, I'm more so German, he pushed forward with his Jewish identity and went deeper and realized that no matter where he was born, grew up and lived in, he would always be a Jew. As things started to get worse within society, he started to ring the bell and tell everyone, guys, we're Jewish. We have to get up. We have to fight back. We have to do something. And if we don't fight back, we have to leave. And the way people responded to him is basically shaming him and saying, how dare you say that? You are the problem. You are the reason why the Nazis are coming after us, because it's people like you that will make them think that we have a dual loyalty. It's people like you that will make them think that we're not going to be a part of them. And if we just didn't make any noise, it would just go away. As he saw things getting worse and worse and worse, he decided that he could not stay there anymore because there was no one with him to fight. He leaves, escapes Germany, eventually becomes a partisan fighter and kills many Nazis. And after the war, comes back into Germany only to find that his entire family had been exterminated, finds a group of orphan Jews and brings them back to the land of Israel. My parents gave me this name to make sure that my generation understands, remembers and learns from the past not just memorializes the stories and learns about what happened, but learns about how it happened, why it happened, and what we need to do to prevent it from happening today. And this is, I think, a lesson that many Jews have missed when learning about the Holocaust. They learn about the what, but not the why. 
They learn about the stories of individuals, but not how those stories evolved and how it happened. And so this is very crucial today more than ever, because when we talk about stories of the Holocaust, it's not just touching stories. It's our story. When we view the stories of our past now coming up with Purim and other stories of, of Pesach and others, this is our story. The Holocaust is our story. We are the survivors as well because we take on those stories and continue it. It's not just an external experience outside that we learn and we put into a frame and we once a year just look at it and talk about it and see and, and feel good and have some tears and go away. It is us that is the continuation of that, which is why we must learn from what happened in order to make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay, shortly we will celebrate Pesach, Passover, and we sit at the table, okay, and we talk about the story. And we have to remember that not only our ancestors, okay, were liberated from its tribe, from Egypt, but we ourselves, the root is made sad, which is basically constriction. So I are internally, emotionally, we are putting constrictions on ourselves in post. And we have to liberate ourselves. We have to feel proud of being Jews and everything else. The question, how will we react to it? Will, will we be silent? And like I said before, silence is dead, or will we become active? A lot of the young people, and even adults say, well, I'm uh, one person, what can I do? Not only do they have a voice, not only can they make a difference, but each one of them, if they believe in themselves, and that's what we have to teach them, they can make a huge difference. And that is very important, and we do not teach them. So recently, I was in Tallahassee, and I spoke at Florida State University that I know you spoke at as well. And after my speech, uh, where I talked about Jewish empowerment and identity and that we need to learn from our past and know who we are and never forget that the places that we were born, grew up and lived in, if outside of Israel, is just a chapter in our diaspora experience and in our displacement and not really who we are and where we're from. There was a Holocaust survivor named Eva Gross who came up to me and said that she had grown up in Hungary and that her family, as they saw the rise of anti-Semitism in their community, uh, were always telling her and her and her siblings that they were Hungarian first and that the Hungarian society would never go against them, that they would be protected. And that what my message resonated with her is basically the lessons that the people before her should have known. Unfortunately, she went through the Holocaust. She went to Auschwitz twice. Fortunately, her and her mother survived, but her rest of her family members didn't. And she was communicating with me that we need to learn and recognize that we made mistakes in the past. And so I made a post about it and a lot of people got upset. So I decided to make a video and to go a little bit deeper. Did you feel that my video was made to create a call to action for us to learn from the past. It was done very well. The way you presented and uh, your goal, you're not accusing uh, the victims or whatever it is, okay? You're basically trying to emphasize the need to learn from history to know how to deal with the uh, spike in uh, anti-Semitism and hatred today. So what do you think that most people today have not learned from the mistakes of Jews during the Shoah? We have not learned to react immediately when something is not right, when somebody tells a lie, uh, not standing up, calling it out. We have not uh, learned uh, silence equals death. Okay, we cannot be bystanders. As a bystanders, whether we know it or not, we are part of the problem. All of us have a choice. I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to be. And within my means, I choose to be a happy person. Uh, so it's very important for people uh, to become upstanders and to choose, okay, to be proud of their heritage, of who they are, not to uh, ignore when somebody perpetuates false narratives. I want to first off, thank you for taking the time and engaging in this conversation, sharing your story, your takes. And it's a, it's a tough conversation to have for a lot of people, but it's a very important one to have, which is why uh, we need to have it and to talk more about it. I also want to say that as a descendant of Holocaust survivors, and I think even the Jews that don't have family members that were in the Shoah are also affected by the story because it happened to all of us. We are all one. We are one people. And this is our story. And we're the continuation of it, even if you don't have ancestors that were there. And I want to make a commitment to you that I will do everything that I can in my generation to make sure that the terms never again are not just random sounds coming out of our mouths once or twice a year, to make sure that we learn from the past every single chapter of Jewish history, to make sure that we are strong and proud, to make sure that we find a way to unite the left, the right, the religious, the secular, all the different parts of Amisla that make up a beautiful light, and to make sure that we are able to succeed in achieving our purpose and are united in order for not others to write our story, but for us to write our own story and make sure that we continue on in a much stronger way. And I am very honored that from all of the Holocaust survivors, 
for whatever reason you chose me okay, <laughs> to talk about it. So I'm uh, very honored. So I'm available for anybody that wants uh, to talk to me, uh, wants to ask questions. We all have our mission and purpose in this life. And we have an individual purpose and a collective purpose. And a lot of people sometimes judge me. You know, they don't like that I say this, they don't like that I say that. But honestly, I dedicate every ounce of my being to be able to create light and to unite humanity, to unite the Jewish people, to unite the Middle East, and to be able to transcend the problems that exist in this world. And even if people disagree, they don't understand how much I dedicate to this cause. And I only hope that with time, um, those that I've empowered, those that have helped educate, those that have helped along the way, uh, will be able to also continue this work in order for all of us to be on the same path. Now, other people have told me, okay, that I have become a very strong voice and a very uh, strong activist. But it's not something that I plan to do it. It's that you planted the seed and you put me on the map in the sense that right now I decided, you know, to go to campuses and to talk about it. And uh, because of you, and I will internally be uh, grateful. Wish you amon amon atzlacha. I hope, uh, hope that this video will get you many more people to hear your story, invite you to their communities and learn from you. And uh, may we continue on this path. And uh, fortunately, we belong to a common society. You know which one it is? Which one? Uh, MAS. MAS. Mutual Admiration Society. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. Dami, I want to wish you. Uh, a continuation of all your work and all the light that you're bringing to the world, a lot of health, happiness, success, and may you empower many, many other people uh, to be able to achieve and access their potentials. And may they learn from you in order for them to go and continue spreading the light for us to all achieve our purpose and to learn and to grow and to heal and to move forward in the right way. Rudy. <laughs>